19 years ago, we woke up on a beautiful September morning and went to sleep, having seen things we never thought we would have seen. The events of September 11th changed this city, changed this country, changed our department, and changed the lives of every New Yorker. Each year at this time, we recall the unspeakable tragedy which we endured as a city and as a nation when evil people attacked our way of life. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in the Union Hall, which isn't too far from 9-11. One of the bosses on the phone told me, ha, a plane just hit into the Twin Towers. At 8.46 a.m., American Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower, hitting floors 93 to 99. At 9.03 a.m., United Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower, hitting floors 77 to 85. On the morning of September 11, 2001, we watched from the top of Fresh Kills here as the towers fell. On that fateful day, I was an oil mechanic. I worked in Brooklyn. I was traveling back. I worked with a welder by the name of Winston Franklin. And we saw that second plane hit that second tower. I remember looking out the window in the Union Hall and seeing the gray cloud come around the corner and darken in front of the Union Hall. There was no sun. Looked down on the ground, saw ash that much. I was a sanitation worker at Manhattan 9. I worked at Ground Zero. I remember working here in the main office after 9-11 and how challenging it was on a daily basis to uh, see the aftermath of what Manhattan went through. On this day, over 3,000 innocent souls died and over 25,000 injured. Sadly to say, the death toll still climbs to today. We must never forget all the people who perished that day and the images of what we saw. We must make sure that it stays seared in our memory as we take stock 19 years later of flying pieces of paper, of smoke, of ash. It kind of sticks with you forever. And then there was the heroism of first responders who without hesitation entered the conflagration of those burning towers to save whomever they could. This department, along with many other response agencies, had to adapt to something that had never been done before. Then I got a call that we were sending some of our men immediately down to the, to the spot, the hole, to try to open up the area for the fire department police department to get to that hole to see if anybody was still alive. Over a thousand sanitation workers were dispatched to ground zero and here at Fresh Kills we started to mobilize for what would become the largest crime scene in history. In the days after that insidious attack, the city was clouded. A dark cloud was pervasive, fear, anger, and rage. Out of that dark cloud there was a glimmer of light that ultimately led to a silver lining. And that was a feeling of camaraderie and joint purpose in the face of hardship shared by all responders. That feeling spread north of Canal Street and out through South Ferry and across the city. It was that feeling that enabled and energized this city to rebuild and prosper. And what about the dedication of the many city workers, including those of our own department, who went back to Ground Zero in the days and weeks and months that followed to help recover whatever precious relics were to be found and then to clear away the debris and begin the long but necessary process of rebuilding our city in loving memory of those precious lives we lost. The primary task of sanitation was to make sure that all of the World Trade Center material from Ground Zero made it to fresh kills here for the FBI and NYPD to, to forensically search. Out of fresh kills, they were sifting, they set up tents to go through to find certain material to identify most of the people that did perish 
in those towers going down. The work that was done down there was grueling and hard and took an emotional toll as well as a physical toll on all involved. At the end of the day, we completed our mission. Uh, the sanitation workers, the men and women of the sanitation department faced this, this huge challenge with such dedication and determination. I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. It really made me proud to be a sanitation worker. It was probably our, our proudest moment in our most tragic time in the city. Of course, we also know well that the ravages of that day continue to take their toll even now in the ongoing sicknesses contracted by those who sacrifice their own safety and well-being in the aftermath of our national tragedy. What we didn't know was that everybody that participated in the cleanup and worked in the landfills and worked on the equipment were also going to be affected by the events of that fateful day through illnesses I have sadly passed away and many and many of those souls are now continuing to add up. We never realized when we were out there just doing our job that we were at risk of, of potentially losing our lives. And we have paid a heavy price for that involvement with many succumbing to 9-11 illnesses in the years that have followed. We lost nobody when those towers came down. It was after the fact. It was after they retired. The members of service we've lost all hold a deep place in our hearts. For me, Ryan McCormick, I worked with him in Q5, good man, and my old partner, Dennis Hyde. I miss him every day. The names of our friends and coworkers that we lost and paid the ultimate price did so by simply doing their job, by going out and doing their job that was required of them. And unfortunately, it was deemed that the air and dust was a toxic bowl of poisons. So that's why we all come together on this date every year for the last 19 years. And what we try to do is remember and not forget those that were lost. I would like to acknowledge and recognize all the men and women of the agency who selflessly gave uh, after the events of 9-11 and are still giving to New York. Um, you are not forgotten. Let's please remember those souls that not only lost their lives that day, but the souls of the individuals and the individuals of this department and the tradespeople in this department, the uniform, everyone who lost their lives since because of the events of that day. Here we are today, 19 years later, and some similar emotions hang over the city. Anger, division, rage. And I can't but help think that it would be fitting to honor those who passed from one tragedy by taking the lesson that they helped us learn into the next, which is that united we stand, divided we fall. And as we speak for people of every faith, we solemnly promise ever to remember the goodness of those whose lives were cut all too short on that tragic day. The names we're reading today are the men and women who spent time on a recovery that helped the city try to heal. It's to these people that we must honor their memories. We must honor the work they did, the sacrifices that they made, and never forget. I'm proud to be a part of getting this off the ground so that the agency could properly recognize and remember its employees. They are a part of a city's history. This is just the beginning of DSNY's commitment to commemorating those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Hopefully, this will just be the starting point of things to come for the department in terms of recognizing all of the employees that uh, gave selflessly and continue to do so. We will never forget, not this year, not any year, we will never forget. God bless them, their souls, and the families they left behind. Never forget. Edward Alston, Anthony Asaf, Roger Augusty, Jack Boccaccio, John J. Burney, Paul Beckowiz, Joseph Bolero, 
Maurice Blackman, Mark Bleha, Jeffrey Blois, Daniel Bonanno, Ronald Brinkley, Brian Campbell, Barbara Caparelli, Joseph Carafano, Michael Caserta, Glenn Chateau, Lawrence Marcellus Clark, Ronald Cohen, George Colucci, John Jack Comney, Thomas Coppola II, Richard Donino, James Denuncio, Louis DeBella, Michael DePrisco, Daniel Donovan, Alphonse Falco, Rosalino Butch Fanara, Robert Fieser, Theodore Ted Fieser, Frank Feeney, Renzo Ferrari, Joseph Fiorello, Silvana Flager, Marcial Fortune Murray, William Gibson, Harold Golden, Dennis Hanley, Charles Herps, Wilfredo Hernandez Sr. Dennis Hyde. Alexander Casasavitas. John Kelly. Robert Kurgis. Christopher King. Robert LaGreca. Joseph Landolfi. Stephen Larson. Michael Lombardo. Andrew Macchio. Ralph Marchese. William Marzacci. Ryan McCormick. Frederick Meyer, Jr. Marshall Merriweather. Arthur Mandela, Jr. Andrew Moore. Lorenzo Morelli. Peter Mosmutis. Michael Mouton. Edward Murray. Javier Nicholson. John Nuzzi. Ralph Olivia, Sr. David Oropisa. Michael O'Sullivan. Eloy Pagan, Jr. Brian Podell. Ralph Priola. Maria Quintero Diaz. Thomas Ryan. William M. Ryan, Sr. James Shiro. John Schmitta. Gary Smith. John Smith. Alexis Solomon. Adolf Stampfell. William Stupnikoff. Thomas Toll. Lawrence Troy. Miguel Vera. Mark Vicos. Stephen Violetta. William Vitello. William Weiser. Charles Womack. I would ask the chaplain to give a special blessing to the sanitation workers, Local 831, and also anyone that works for this department should be recognized. And let's beat down this virus together. I believe in the mask. I think my members should be wearing more masks the department is giving it to us when you're out there. So let's, let's be safe. Be safe for your families. And we'll get through this together. As we close, we remember another tragedy in our own time, COVID-19. And we're going to ask a special blessing on all of our sanitation family, in a particular way, all of those who have been affected in any way by the ravages of this disease, and we pray in a special way for God's protection on all of us as we continue our work and continue our lives. And we ask God's blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.